All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. Lots of activity in the chat already. All right. So hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joy McFarland. I'm the marketing manager for ELT for the US and Canada. We are happy to have you with us today for today's webinar, A New Look at ESL Beginning Literacy for Adults with Rob Jenkins and Stacey Johnson, the authors of Standout. We'd love to thank you all for joining us. And before we get started, we just want to take a couple of minutes to go over some light housekeeping. So first off, at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice that there are several icons. First button on the left that you'll see is the chat function. So be sure to set your message to all panelists and attendees to ensure that we can all read your message when we do some activities. That's where you'll be answering any questions that we have. On the right, you'll see a Q&A button. That is where you can ask the presenters questions. So we will do our best to answer the questions as they come in and we'll have some dedicated Q&A time at the end of the session to go over that. Um, you will receive a certificate for this webinar. Please expect that in five to 10 business days. And without further ado, I am pleased to introduce today's speakers, Stacey Johnson, has taught all levels of adult ESL, including credit, non-credit, and workplace English. She holds a master's degree in linguistics with a teaching ESL certificate, which is supported by more than 25 years in the English language classroom. Her passions are teacher training and curriculum development, both of which she does on a continual basis. And Rob Jenkins is a popular presenter and author of English as a Second Language Topics. He is a retired faculty member from Santa Ana College School of Continuing Ed, where he taught ESL for 27 years and served as faculty development coordinator for 20. Rob and Stacy received the 2013 Heinley Outstanding Achievement Award from National Geographic Learning for their textbook series Standout, which is coming out in its fourth edition this year. And on that note, I will turn it over to you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Joy. Um, as Joy said, I'm Stacy Johnson, and my co-presenter is Rob Jenkins. We are both ESL teachers and the authors of Standout, which is now a seven-level series, which we wrote over 23 years ago, which makes us sound a little bit old, but no, we're not that old. Right, Rob? Um, <laughs> Rob and I, uh, we actually connected at Santa Ana College School of Continuing Education, which is located in Southern California. We are both from Southern California. And um, my favorite part is now to jump over into the chat. And I know some of you have already been saying it, but I love to see where you guys are from. Belarus, Vietnam, Portugal, Afghanistan, Mexico, Washington, D.C., Peru, Missouri, Turkey, Ukraine. Oh, my goodness. I hope you're all looking in the chat. This is so incredible. So far, we've got about 170 people here and you guys are from all over the world, which is so exciting to us. Rob and I love to work with students, but our second love is working with teachers and we don't often get to reach teachers around the world. So this is super fun for us and exciting uh, to do a webinar like this and have so many of you here, Turkey, Texas, Virginia. Oh my gosh. All right, keep them coming. We're going to jump and start. We're going to jump in and start this presentation. Um, but so fun to see where you guys are all from. Um, so as I mentioned, Standout is now a seven level series. And today we're going to be talking about our new addition to the Standout family of books, Literacy Foundations. Rob and I have enjoyed working to create and continuously improve our six level series for adult education over the past 20 years. Today, we are super excited to introduce a new comprehensive literacy level, which will be available in early 2024. So today, this is our agenda of what we're gonna be doing today. Um, first, we're gonna talk about who our literacy students are. This is super important because most literacy materials have been geared towards children until now. Um, then we're gonna present the standout approach, which we've been working on for over 20 years. Um, Rob and I created a, what we think is a really unique approach to teaching ESL, and we've continued to use that approach in this literacy level. Then we're gonna go over some examples from the book, and then Rob's gonna jump in and walk you through a sample lesson. But first, let's talk a little bit about literacy in the United States. So as you can see from this quote, um, 43 million American adults have low English literacy levels. So I looked this up last night. There are about 258 million adults in the United States. 
So if we say that 43 million of them don't have foundational literacy skills, that's about 16% of the US population. That's a staggering number to me that there's 16% of the adults in the United States. I know you guys are from all over the world, so I'm sure it's similar or maybe even worse in your country. Um, these these uh, adults that don't have foundational literacy skills. We call these learners emergent literacy learners. You're gonna hear that term throughout the presentation today. Unfortunately, low literacy levels don't just affect one's ability to read and write. Um, as you can see on the next slide, it also affects their access. So if you look at this chart, and then you look at the information next to it, basically it's showing that adults with below basic to basic literacy levels are over five times more likely to report being in poor health than their more literate counterparts. So why do you think that is? Why would this be the case? Go ahead, give me some ideas in the chat box. How would literacy correlate to poor health or lack of literacy? Good, maybe feeling shame about going to the doctor and not being able to fill out the forms so they just don't go. Yep, they can't read information about health, can't read nutrition labels. Yeah, another thing related to the reading is they maybe can't read medicine labels. Maybe they can get a prescription for something but they can't read um, the dosage. Yep, limited job opportunities for people who are chronically poor, can't afford medical help. Ability to explain yourself. Okay, good, good, good. So you guys see that literacy isn't just reading and writing. It affects other things in their everyday life, health being one, health being one of the most important. Um, so this is just one example of the, the, the issue with low literacy. WIOA asks that we prepare our students for the workplace and give them opportunities to be successful in the United States. But basic literacy has to be the first step. Okay, thank you, Stacy. I, I just want to say that I'm really excited to be here too. It's uh, it's uh, great to talk to you all. I'm um, I'm excited about this new product that we have and, and what we've learned about literacy over the last 25 years and uh, the discussions we've had over those years. We we think that we have something that you're going to be really excited about. One of the things that um, we sometimes think of uh, low literacy as, yeah for adults as, okay, we're going to teach them like children. Uh, we're going to use the same materials as children. But there are things that adults know that nobody else, that the, their children don't know. There are some experiences that they have that their children don't have. But let's start with challenges. What are some of the challenges um, that um, some of our um, students that are have low literacy? Sometimes when we talk about emergent literacy, we're talking about maybe they have no education up to maybe a third grade education in their country. So they don't really have a lot of academic experience, but what, so that would be one challenge. What's some other challenges? Go ahead and uh, give us some ideas. Not tech savvy, good. Un, um, untreated learning disabilities, uh, good. Uh, other ideas, difficulty to find a job, yeah. What are some challenges they might have in the classroom learning the language? Uh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, went, one went fast, too fast. I missed it. But uh, yeah, some of these are, these are great ideas. I hope everybody's looking at this. Um, yeah, some uh, decreasing the possibility of uh, depression and other things. Um, no time to focus on learning with balancing day to day responsibility. Sure. But those are all things. In the classroom, um, they are, they could be frustrated. There's lots of different things. Let's just look at some of the ideas that Stacey had. Your ideas are great, and I'm sure there's more uh, than what we wrote here, but uh, here are some ideas. They may be limited in communication skills in English, right? So they, they may be very, they're not able to read and write, um, or they can do it very limitedly. Um, they don't even, if they have no education, they may not even realize it in, in English, at least, we read from left to right and from top to bottom. They may have a difficulty with um, even identifying that letters represent sounds. Uh, those things they might be challenged with because they haven't really had that experience. They might have minimal um, schooling or academic experience. 
So even getting into the classroom and sitting down in the chair and talking to the teacher or listening, they may feel very uncomfortable about that. Um, I can think of lots of experiences in my life of going to other countries. Uh, I went to Korea uh, a while back, well, a long time ago now, but uh, with my son who speaks fluent Korean and uh, uh, he left me alone to go see a girl. And he says, oh, dad, just go get your own food. Go get your own dinner and stuff. I said, oh, sure. And then I went out and then it was very difficult for me, even though I have uh, experience. So to add to that, I have experience with language, I have experience with other things, but um, add to that, that if you don't have schooling, you don't have academic experience, that might be really difficult in, in society to, to function and you gotta have a lot of courage. I really think that our students are fantastic because of the courage that they have. They may have confidence issues and they may be embarrassed. So these are just a few of the ideas, but we sometimes forget to recognize that the, our students as adults are different than children and they have some other skills. So what are some of the things that you might think of? And go ahead and give me some ideas about this. What can they already do? What can students, because they're adults, can do already? Do you have any ideas? I'll give you, a, okay. Yeah, sure, they can talk. They've already, um, they, they understand body language. Um, they're probably pretty efficient at it, that's right. Problem solve, communicate in their own way. Um, sure, they're, they have a lot of things. These are great answers, really good. Critical thinking and common sense, great. They can drive a car, um, uh, wonderful. So these are, these are great answers. I'm gonna go ahead and share with you um, a few of ours. So here we go, I think, there we are. Um, some things they already can be code. Think about this for a minute. If you see a, a, a red sign in, at the street at a corner, you might know even if you can't read the, the sign, what it's for, it means to stop, right? Um, there's symbols and things that they already identify with um, because of their experience in life. They manage many life skills without reading and they can do it well because they've, they've learned uh, a lot of things. So these are things that our students can do, manage fine motor skills. So maybe they, maybe they don't know how to use a pencil, maybe they do, but it won't be as difficult for them because they've already, they can pick up a fork, they can, they can use their fingers for all sorts of things. Some of them are very skilled laborers. Some of them have a lot of different experience. So, so managing fine motor skills is another thing that would be great. And somebody mentioned in the, in, in the chat, think critically and solve problems. That's right. So um, our students, some, we should never think of our adult students as people that can't think critically. We give them more experience so that they can understand how to think critically in the academic setting, but they already are solving problems. They're doing a lot of things. Um, just coming to our classroom is solving a problem because they, they had to register and all of that. They may have, have had to ask for help from someone, but that's solving a problem. They understand social flutes. Some of you mentioned that. And speak and learn spoken English despite having a reading deficit. So all of these things um, are things that our students can already do. We need to recognize that as we're teaching them. So we're not teaching children, we're teaching adults. Uh, last um, week, there was a, a webinar that I really enjoyed by Marina um, Badalek from um, the University of Washington. And she was great. And she brought up this quote and I loved it. So I, I'm sharing it with you guys today. So adult second language learners with emergent literacy may be beginning classroom learners and or beginning writers, but they are not beginning thinkers or beginning learners. I love this quote. This is fantastic because this is exactly our approach, exactly what we're thinking about as we talk about our students' needs. Okay, Stacy. So look at this picture. Let's try to imagine how our students feel when they're bombarded by so much input at the same time. What are they experiencing? A lot of people will refer to Krashen's I plus one comprehensible input in the classroom, but for these emergent learners, it's more like I plus 1000. Yeah, I 
see what you guys are typing in the box. They're confused, they're overloaded, they're shy. Yes, the silent scream, anxiety, overwhelmed. Yeah, and if you feel like that as an adult, what's gonna get you into the classroom? How are you gonna feel comfortable going into the classroom when you feel all of those emotions? So what do you think we can do to help students relieve the stress? In the classroom, what are some ideas? What are some things you think that we can do as teachers to relieve their stress? Tell them they're not alone, icebreakers. Share your own personal experiences like Rob just shared with his, uh, his story from Korea. Routines, yes. TPR, giving them confidence, listen to them. Yeah, great, great ideas. I'm, you guys are all great teachers, so I'm sure that you would do great with this population. So what would we do? What are you gonna see in the Standout Literacy Foundations book? Okay, you're gonna see that we manage the input, okay? Don't give them too much at once, okay? Manage it, break it down into manageable chunks for them. The next thing, and someone mentioned this, was make sure students know what to expect, okay? Give them a routine. In Literacy Foundations, we follow a routine to cut down on the stress. In the other levels of standout, we help them know what to expect, but we have a great, greater variety of activities. We call this objective-driven learning. So Literacy Foundations is the same. They, it does follow objectives, but the activities are more in a routine, more in a template format, as you'll see when Rob takes you through a lesson. So students encounter the same type of activities in each lesson. They're gonna get comfortable with it. They're gonna feel like, oh, I know what's next. I know what to do here. And that's gonna give them confidence. We follow a systematic and comprehensive approach. We set attainable goals. We make sure the students can see their progress. We make sure they can apply what they learn. And most importantly, we make sure that the materials that we're giving them are relevant to adult learners. This is the standout approach. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about each of these in a little bit, but this is the standout approach. This is something we have always done in our standout books and it hasn't changed in this literacy foundation level. Okay, so in the last slide, we talked about what we have done in literacy foundations to meet the needs of our students. As with our other levels, we follow the standout approach. Every lesson has a goal and we have a goal for the entire book. So let me show you what the goal is for this book. By the end of this course, students will be prepared to enter the mainstream classroom and function effectively in standout basic. This is a comprehensive book. This isn't a workbook. This isn't something you add on to the other book you're teaching. This is your approach to teaching students literacy and getting them ready for the next level in your ESL program. So as I said before, literacy is, is comprehensive. In other words, this is not an add-on program or workbook. It's a full color, fully developed program that covers all consonants, vowels, and many sight words in a systematic way. It's also an integrated four skills approach. So we're not just reading and writing, which is what people think of when they think of literacy, which makes it sort of an add-on sometimes, but they're also gonna be developing speaking and listening skills. It's a phonics approach. So they're gonna be introduced to one or two letters in each lesson and they will focus on those letters and the sounds they represent. Something that we also mentioned was that it was adult relevant and useful material in context. So the activities in this book are designed for adults, not children. We believe, as I'm sure you do, that our students deserve the dignity to be treated as adults. Each page has a variety of activities in a context that mirrors the themes in Standout Basic, if you're familiar with Standout Basic. If not, I'm gonna show you some themes in just a second. There are many more activities on a page and smaller fonts than you may have seen in other literacy books. They follow the same lesson plan format that you're familiar with. Each four page lesson provides over two hours of instruction for each day of class. And that doesn't count any additional worksheets or online practice that you do with your students. And finally, as with other standout books, this program was designed to include teacher guidance and support, okay? Again, this is not a workbook, but a book for an interactive classroom. 
So on the next slide, you'll see this comprehensive approach. Now, if any of you are on a phone, you probably can't see this, or if you're on a small laptop, you might not be able to see this very well. But what, what I want you to see, if you can see anything, is that first of all, on the very left column, you'll see what I was talking about, the content, the context that the letters are gonna be presented in. So just like all the other standout books, you've got personal information, the classroom, food, clothing, community, health, work, and lifelong learning. Each lesson has a context, and then each lesson has a target letter or letters. Um, and then, so you've got five lessons doing that. And then finally in your sixth lesson is called putting it together. So a review where you're working on all the five lessons that you just did before. So whether that be five letters or 10 letters. Um, and then sometimes we're adding in a new vowel in those, um, in those uh, putting it together lessons. I'm reading the comments and trying to present at the same time, but I'm so happy to see what you guys are saying in the chat. Don't worry, I'm reading and I'm presenting. All right, so uh, go ahead. You want to say something, Rob? No. Oh, no, you're going to go. No. Oh, you're going to talk. Okay. <laughs> but um, I, I am. I'm very excited too. I'm not as good at multitasking as Stacy, so I'm not, not reading as many. But Stacy will fill me in <laughs> as we go through. I wanted to give you now. What we want to do is we want to give you kind of a sense of what is in the book and give you an idea of how it's designed. Um, the students in the pre-unit, we call the welcome unit, um, before book, before unit one, um, they are introduced. They're not expected to learn it all perfectly and be, know all the letters, but they're introduced to the alphabet and to numbers. Um, and they're also introduced to some other um, information that they need on how to follow directions but it's very, very basic and it's more of a reference later. So they may be able to say the alphabet, but we know that just being able to say the alphabet is not enough to be able to be literate in the language. In fact, one of the things that I like to mention and we'll mention again later is that um, Standout or, or any literacy program, uh, we know that getting a student from um, their, their emergent stage to the next stage, which is being able to participate in the classroom with other students that have a little bit more academic experience. Um, that is very important, but their literacy experience goes through all of standout. We're not saying, okay, suddenly at the end of standout, everybody will be literate. What we're saying is that we're giving them the experiences they need um, and the um, understanding they need to be able to function in that uh, basic book, which is our first level or after literacy, it's the next level basic of the standout series. There is a book one that follows that. Um, somebody asked that in the chat, I did read that. Um, anyway, every unit opens up with a, a big spread like this. And I want you to think about it for a minute. You can ask your students question. One of the things that happens is that sometimes we think, oh, literacy students can't learn English, but we have, for all of you that have taught with students that are, have literacy issues, in the classroom and they're not in a literacy class, you know those students can learn. The problem is that they may fall behind because of reading or writing. So if they're in a basic level or a, a level one, they, they might be struggling with reading and writing and a lot of times they drop out because they just don't have that foundation, which is what we're doing here. So that's the kind of thing that uh, we wanna recognize that when we talk about they're also learning listening and speaking, they are learning this vast amount of information, but um, they are learning the language at the same time. So, uh, so you can ask them questions. Uh, what we see in a spread like this is the first thing you see is that over to the right, you can see that there's things that they already know. Yeah, they know what a name tag looks like. They might be able to identify the person's name. You could say point to the address, for example, on a card. There's lots of different things that you can do. So this is how a unit is set up. Let me show you the, um, uh, for this for personal information, the uh, different lessons. There are six lessons, uh, four page lessons in uh, um, each unit and there's eight units. Uh, so in this unit, the first unit, they'll be talking about names. They're gonna practice saying hello. Uh, the third uh, four page lesson will be where talking about their addresses and talking about um, way of, where they came from and their family. And then sixth, um, that Stacy mentioned is kind of a review lesson. 
to go over all of that. So we're pulling these letters together and these ideas together into one. So that's kind of the idea. So why don't we take a minute? I'm gonna walk you through unit three. So this is a different unit. This is a unit on food. And I'm gonna just kind of walk you through it. I've got a few minutes to do this. So I wanna make sure that you get this concept um, of it. I'll probably be talking more, but please feel free to um, talk in the chat. And Stacy, you can interrupt me as we're going through it. There's important questions that come up. Um, all right. So if I were doing this lesson, first of all, there's a lesson plan. So um, if those of you that you stand up know that the lesson planner is a comprehensive, it's not a teacher's guide. A lesson planner has more than just a teacher's guide. A teacher's guide is designed for what people um, see on the page. What do you do with that page? A lesson planner is more structured to go through um, six levels of a lesson plan, which is warm up, introduction, presentation practice, evaluation, and application. So a lot of times the lesson planner will start with the books closed. So imagine for a minute you're not seeing this, and I start the class, and, I, and I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? So you can go ahead and talk in the um, chat if you want, just to answer these as, as students for just a minute. But I, I come into class and I say, students, I am very hungry. I need to eat something right now. Uh, I, you know what I need? I need a banana. And I write banana on the board. And so I will write banana on the board and pronounce every letter so they can see, and we've been doing this for three units, but they can see that I'm reading from left to right, I'm writing from left to right, and I'm pronouncing each letter, banana, each syllable I'm pronouncing. So they can see that. And then um, what else can I eat? And then I ask the students to give me a long list of things. This would be our warm up for the class. So even before the books are open, um, we would make a list on the board of different things. Um, so what are some of the words that you would come up with to help me because I'm so hungry? What are some words that you could write? Just, just to get your minds flowing and get you into this lesson a little bit. I know this is an easy question, but help me out. What kind of food would you like? Uh, would you like me to write on the board? Anything. You can write anything you want. A burger, okay? I'm going to write burger on the board. It doesn't have to start with a B. They don't know that it's B is, uh, is our target yet. Apple, right? Something that has some, some, something like a, 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 a vegetable or a fruit is good, but tacos, I'll eat anything. I got my nuts right here. I need them for my energy. So that's good. Biscuits, okay, great. Now I, I introduce them to the sound that we're going to do. I already introduced them to the context, haven't I? Now I'm, I'm gonna go back to my word banana on the board. I'm gonna underline the B. I already have an agenda on the board. We've, in the lesson planner, we give you a suggested agenda that you can put on the board. So you already have that all ready for you. And I'm going to pronounce the B and I'm gonna tell them that today we're going to talk about B like in banana, like and banana. Now you can teach them how to pronounce the B and you have them repeat the B. Everything in this lesson is, um, is on audio. So in, in the book, everything's on audio. So uh, you'll have the, the Bs pronounced for you, but you can pronounce them yourselves. So I would say ba ba ba, and I'd explain to them how, how we do that, that we have our lips um, not tightly, but loosely um, together. And then we blow force air through them and we make the buzz sound. I might help them distinguish between the buzz sound and the puss sound. And so then I would show them uh, letter B and we would look at these bananas, beans, and butter. So these are a few more words. I'd have them pronounce them. I would talk about them and say bananas are a dollar, beans are a dollar, butter is three are three dollars. Our butter is $3. And I would practice that a little bit. And then I would have them do a few things. Like, for example, I would have them and, and uh, uh, raise their hand. I'm going to say different words. And you just raise your hand. You don't have to raise your hands. But um, the students would raise their hands every time I say a word that starts with B. So I might say, uh, I might say, bye. Okay. They would raise their hand. If I said pig. Some of them might raise their hand. So then we would work on the B and the P sound a little bit to make sure we could distinguish them. 
I'd say words that were very distinct that are do not start with B, but maybe like a fricative, like F. Um, F has is a fricative, so your lips are kind of close together, but your teeth are over, right? So if I were to say finger, they might we might have to work with them. So all of these things put together, I would practice with them, and then um, we're ready for letter C. And in letter C, it's all, all audio is with all of these. And so letter C, um, I would, um, the audio would say number one, banana, banana, banana. So they check. Now they've learned how to do this checking and marking what's, what it is. This activity develops throughout the series. So it gets a little more difficult, but this is how we start. Number two is bun. So they would. Put a check there. Number three is pepper. Some students might put a P. We observe that. We help them to understand the distinction between B and P. The next one is peaches, another P word. Broccoli, grapes, uh, pie, basket, bread. So some of these words will have that sound and some of them won't. And so we're helping them distinguish the sounds. And then finally, they need to go between the um, letters, we help them to identify this. Students at this level might have trouble distinguishing between Bs and Ds and other letters So and numbers. So we give them this activity and we do this through the first half of the book so they get used to recognizing these particular letters. So if, if we're working on one element of, um, of literacy at this point, um, so uh, this part of the lesson, this first page of four pages, what is, um, what would you label this? What are they doing? What are they experiencing? What, how could we give a name to this type of, uh, to this, these types of activities? What, what advantages do the students, what are the students learning? Let me put it that way. The first time I ask this question, it might be difficult. Second page, I'm going to show you, uh, will be easier because you'll understand what I'm asking for. But anybody have any ideas? Sound symbol recognition. Absolutely right. Phonics. Yes. Okay. So here we go. So we're doing listening and letter sound recognition. So that's great. Sound symbol recognition. It sounds like Sarah that you got that you were looking at the video for my uh, PowerPoint beforehand. Very good. All right. Let's go to page two. We're, we're I'm, it's taking a little bit of time to do this. So, oops, did I get to page two? Yeah. So page two is a little different. And uh, here we introduce the letter. Now, they've had an opportunity to write Bs before in units one and two. There's words that have Bs and they have to write them occasionally. And they have all these things. But now we are really concentrating on helping them to form the letters. They start with, bigger, with a bigger font. So they can trace it and write it and tell they're ready to write it all on their own. So this is something that they do. And then more like in standout basic, the next level, they need to write them in a smaller, I'm saying font, but they need to write them smaller, uh, bananas, beans, butter, bag. And again, this is all listening first. So they're gonna hear the word and then they're gonna write it. Bananas, beans, butter, bag bread, basket. They don't need to learn all these words. That's one of the things that's important here. We put the words in so there's always a context. It's really important. And they're going to know some of these words and they're going to want to learn more of these words. So they may end up writing down. They may start. They're going to be repeated throughout the book. So they get an opportunity to see them over and over. So they're developing their vocabulary. But it's more passive at this point. It's not like, oh, you're required to do this. It's a passive thing. And then we do the capital letter B. And what I think is important, what we think is important here is that students need to understand and we're teaching them that we start a sentence with um, a capital letter. So throughout the book, in every lesson, we have this capital letter. Um, and, and we start sentences so that they can see how well these things work together. Beans are a dollar, butter is $3. In the lesson planner, it tells us to go back to that first page and look back at that, um, at, at that uh, market advertisement so that they, they can practice this, and that's what we do. So if I were to label 
this page, what would I label it? Any ideas? Okay, so the first page was sound recognition. What's the next page? Letter formation, good. Okay, writing, okay, so let's see what we call it. Writing control, mechanics. So this is mechanics. They're really not writing other than they, are, they write letters, but they're not really physically writing sentences or anything else right now. They're just getting control of this one letter. So we're focusing in on this one letter. Um, that's important because what comes, there's gonna be two more pages. So this isn't enough to learn the language. We still need to develop the language and the literacy skills at the same time. So I'm going to go to page three. For some reason, there it goes. Okay, so page three. I can't see because I got a. Okay, uh, so page three, um, we, we do a dialogue. We know our students can learn these dialogues because we've had literacy students in our classes for, for a long time, even in our classes that are not literacy classes. And we know they can learn dialogues and sometimes they'll memorize them. They're not necessarily reading them. We try to make it simple so they can read it. Um, but um, some of the students won't be at a point where they can just decode the entire thing. So we're getting them started. We're helping them look at this and they're getting an idea. And as they do this, um, we practice. So in this case, bananas, how much are they? And we go to Jay and we talk about practice with beans and butter. So they're gonna insert beans and butter just like we do in any other classroom. Um, I wanna stress here in the lesson planner, we talk about, especially in K, we talk of NL, we talk about um, how to do choral drills and then to prepare them for doing these dialogues. We write it on the board. We have them write out the word banana, for example, and we have them put all that information together. We um, have, we take turns doing, um, practicing uh, A and B, the teacher's A, the students are B, half the class is A, half the class is B. We uh, do different drills to get them prepared to be able to do this on their own and then they do this. What's important here is that we're also developing sight words. We call them high frequency words or sight words. In, in standout, we're calling them target words, but these are words that they're gonna likely need throughout their um, experience. And so they begin to do that and then they practice. They are gonna write these letters. This is where you see that they're writing other than B, they're just writing letters. And they can refer back to that first welcome page where the alphabet is. But what we're doing is we're having them write these letters write these words so they get a little practice with it. They're, 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 these synapses are, 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 are uh, firing in their brains and they're starting to learn these words and then it becomes a spelling um, practice with them. And every lesson builds on this spelling so that they have more and more. And also we're asking our students to have, um, to have um, uh, flashcards. So these flashcards are also very useful and helpful. So that way, and flashcards, they're cheap. You should get, your students should have a package of flashcards with a little ring on it. They can be fancy or not, but they have a hundred cards and they're like five, seven dollars. So it's something that's great for the students to have. Also, another great thing to have is a little whiteboard, individual whiteboards. You can also get those online, they're great. Um, but the students get an opportunity to practice. And so that's what we're doing here. Um, I'm running a little short on time, so I'm going to go a little faster, but here we have speaking and language development, all right? So I'm going to move on to the page four. So now we've had page one, recognition, symbol recognition. We have writing mechanics, and we have speaking and language development. We need one more thing. What would that be? Well, let's see. So here we have a paragraph. There are words in this paragraph they don't know, and we're not telling them right off the bat. You have a picture that might help them, fruits and vegetables, but they don't necessarily know the word vegetable. They may not even know the word two, T-O-O. -O. Um, some of them will and some of them won't, but we practice with this. We have them decoded as much as they can, uh, but we're not gonna help them too much at this point because we want them to do letter Q. And letter Q, if you see, it says listen in circle, who buys butter, 
Beto buys butter or you buy butter. This is where the students have to figure it out. There's, it's it, the, par the paragraph that they're reading, the few sentences that they're reading is a little above their level. And that's intentional. That's supposed to be that way because we want them to fight through it, to work through it, to find clues, and then to answer the questions about those clues. That's what we're asking them to do. This is, remember, adults can think critically, and this is where they get practice thinking critically. So we have them do this. We have them um, practice a little bit more with writing um, in, at the end here. And then finally, they write about, they're going to write the word by, like, and like. So they, in this case, they're just going R and S. It gets more difficult as you go through the book. And by the time you get to unit eight, they're doing similar activities as they do in, in, in unit um, one, a basic. Um, but then at the end, the lesson planner says, now have them, if they're ready, if you feel good about it, have them write their own sentences in their little notebooks or wherever they're writing. So this is kind of a good start for you. I think that this will help. Um, you see that the students are thinking through all of this. There's a lot of variety in these four pages, and that's what's really going to help them. So here they are coding, critical thinking, and um, they're applying what they've learned to their own lives, they're actually writing at this point. So this is why it's different. This writing is different than the mechanics on page two of the lesson. Now they are writing and they're thinking critically and deducing the meaning of target word through the context. I just took uh, um, one of uh, Alara. Um, I just took your uh, comment. Very good. All right. So moving on, um, Stacy, you want to finish this up here? Yeah, so you just saw one lesson, okay? And earlier, remember, I told you there are five lessons. So this is what a unit looks like. Starts with a unit opener. Remember that two-page spread that had the phone and the driver's license? Starts with a two-page unit opener. Then you have five four-page lessons, okay? In each lesson, you saw the one was focusing on B, and then the next one might will focus on a different letter and a different letter and a different letter. And then you have your lesson six, um, which is a four page review, putting it together and, and, and oftentimes a new a vowel is introduced. And then at the end, you have a two page quiz. Okay, so I'm not going to ask you to calculate how many pages that is in a unit, but you can see what the unit progression is. Okay, let's look at the next slide really quick. Um, so we just wanted you to see what a page from the beginning of the book looks like and what a page from the end of the book looks like. So you you can see the font size is getting smaller. They're, they're, they're doing more stuff. They're, they're able to do more activities. Um, you can even see in exercise C, um, in the, the lesson that Rob showed you, they were just checking when they heard the B. Well, now they're distinguishing between the sounds, okay? It's two sounds that are similar. They're having to distinguish and decide which sound it is, okay? So we just wanted you to see, without being able to see the whole book here, obviously, um, what the progression would be from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. So we want to emphasize that the goal of this book is not only to make sure that students can read and write, but to give them opportunities to gain confidence in social and academic areas as well. Okay, so how are you going to be able to measure success when you're teaching out of this book? you're gonna ask yourself these things. How well can the student interpret simple, relevant tasks? How well can the student communicate in writing? How well can the student participate in the classroom? How well can the student function in society? How well can the student manage an extended absence? You know, this happens to our students all the time where they, they have to leave or their schedule changes at work or whatever, or there's a family emergency or a medical emergency, and then they've got to come back into the classroom. How well can they manage that? And how well can the student discover answers to these questions, answers to questions? Okay, so in standout foundational literacy book, they are going to be getting experience with all of these things. They're going to be getting better at all of these things, and they're going to be prepared to go on to their next level. Okay, so 
1245. I'm not sure what time we were supposed to end. We usually end a little bit early so that you guys can ask questions. But something I wanted to address really quick, uh, someone had asked earlier um, why this book isn't going to be coming out with the rest of the books. Um, it's going to be coming out just a little bit later. Um, I believe Joy can talk about this maybe, but we have a couple of books that are going to be publishing very soon. And then the rest of them are going to come, be coming out the rest of the year. But we've been working really hard on this. We've been doing a lot of research. We've been meeting with focus groups and, you know, the book's already written, but now we're in the part where we're making sure that the font size is correct. We're making sure that we have the, the correct letter A when we want it. Now, you know, either the stacked A or the, or the writing A. There's a lot of little things that go into making this book what we want it to be and what we want it to be for you and for your students. And we just wanna make sure that we get it right. So that's the answer to why it's taking a little bit longer to get this book out as opposed to the other ones, which were already written and we just had to make some, some small adjustments. So one of the things that's, um, that's great about the new edition of Standout is the Spark platform. And the Spark platform has everything you need all in one place. Um, it has your administration tools, your online placement, your teacher resources, your student book, your classroom presentation tool, online practice, um, assessment, and then a course grade book. So if you want to see um, an example of this, if you want to kind of see what this looks like, and then also um, be able to practice with it, you can request a trial. You can see that the website is right there. Um, and you click on that, no, you can't click on it. Um, you'll type that into your browser and you can request a trial and see what this Spark platform is like. It has all the, all the materials that you need. So go ahead, you can um, visit that website and get a demo. And I think we are at the end. So I'm gonna say this really quickly and then please jump in the chat and write questions if you have them. Rob and I will answer if they're related to us. Joy will answer if they're for her. Um, but you can see that Rob and I put our email addresses on this last slide and this wasn't an accident. We actually love to hear from you guys. We love to answer your questions. We love to help you brainstorm a problem that you're maybe having with a student in class. Anything that um, that we can help you with or any questions that we can answer. We love to, to um, work with teachers and we would love to work with you. So please write those email addresses down. Um, I think you're going to be getting this presentation in a couple of weeks and you'll be able to find it again, but you'll be able to watch the whole presentation. But anyway, we hope that you guys would reach out if you have any um, anything you want to talk to us about. So if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Help, I've been using Standout for two years now and my program isn't going to buy new books. Can you help me persuade them? <laughs> Sarah? Yeah, Sarah, um, definitely oh, reach out joy. to your sales consultant and we can definitely help you with some of the backup reasons for why. Um, so how, uh, yes, you will get a certificate in five to 10 business days. Um, Sandra Phillips is asking, are there new videos with this next curriculum? Yes, there are. There are an there's actually an entire new set of videos because there is a new strand on digital literacy. And we are going to be doing our next webinar on digital literacy in Standout and how it will be featured and woven throughout the curriculum. And I am gonna put that link to sign up for that next month in the chat. So please join us to hear more about that. Um, Catherine, you are here in this webinar, you will get a certificate. Um, Someone asked if there are different editions of Standout. I'm not sure if I understand the, the question correctly, but this is now the fourth edition. Um, the third, the fifth edition, the fourth edition. The third edition is still available for purchase until the other ones are, are out. Um, but you can't get like the first or the second edition anymore. Unless no, no, you cannot. You want me to send you my one copy. Um, <laughs> maybe I get my mom to sell hers. I'd like to see it. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, but I think I think the answer to that is that once the new edition is publishing and they've run out of the third edition, then they will no longer be selling the third edition. Lorraine, please reach out to your sales consultant and we will definitely make sure that that happens. I would like to say thank you to everybody that attended. I'm. Uh, you can see that we're passionate about this and excited about this. We've done a lot of work to prepare for this actually over the last 20 years thinking about it. Uh, it's not like something that we just came up with in the last few years. We've really been um, laboring over what could we do to really meet the needs of those students. Being in the classroom for as many years as we've been in the classroom, we see that we are not meeting the needs. Even the best teacher has trouble meeting the needs of 
students with literacy issues because you've got a classroom of 30 people. And so um, it's very hard to turn and give them the attention that you need. So that's one of the reasons that I'm very excited about this. I just, I know that this is gonna be a benefit to, to the field and I hope that you see it that way too. Thank you all. Joy, yeah. do you yes. see the question? I am answering every single question. Don't you worry. Um, all right, I think that brings us to the end. Thank you all so much for joining. And we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar next month. Thanks so much, everyone. And thank you, especially to Robin Stacy. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.